14th chapter. 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. We're going to lay the groundwork this morning for a new series that we'll be preaching for the next couple of Sundays or three maybe. Hallelujah. So we're going to be on this subject for a little while. Trust me, you don't want everything i got this morning because I don't have enough time. Hallelujah. 1 Kings, the 19th chapter. And we're going to pick it up in the 9th verse. We could, we could read the entire thing, but we'll go over it a little bit before we pick up here where we're at. Yeah. As you know this morning that there was a showdown on Mount Carmel between Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. At that time, as it is today, the worship of false gods was rampant. Come on, Same way today, amen? Yes, sir. <laughs> and idol worship. Yeah. So Elijah tells all the prophets of Baal, mm -hmm. so you meet me on Mount Carmel and we'll settle this thing. Yeah. You build you an altar. You cry out for Baal to send the fire. Yeah. And I'll build an altar and I'll mm -hmm. cry out for the Lord to send the fire. Yeah. And we'll see who provides the fire. Amen. And the proof will be in the pudding. Oh, Amen. Right. If Baal is God, yeah. let's worship Him. Uh -huh. But if God, Lord God Jehovah, provides the fire, then we'll worship Him. Amen. Amen. True. So they get up there. We need some preachers with that kind of boldness today. Yes, Amen. Sir. Have, see Elijah, Elijah here. Elijah didn't get up there and say, well, you know, boys, y'all just worship y'all's God. I'll worship my God. And we'll all get there in the end. No, he said, we're fixing to see who God is and who God ain't. Amen? Ah, he wouldn't have fit in with this compromising crowd of today. Amen? Because he walked up there and he said, you go ahead. You call out on your false God. If it had been in the today, you could walk up to him and say, you call out on Muhammad. Yeah. See what happens. Amen. You call out on Allah and see what happens. Amen. Yeah. Come on. And I'll call out on the name, the only name. Hallelujah. Oh, the only name known among me. The only seed the Father has taken the name of His Son and has exalted it above every name. Amen. Right. On earth, under the earth, in earth, in heaven, every name, Come the on. Son's name has been exalted. Amen. So Elijah says, You call out on Baal. So they do that. They get up there and they go through the motions and they're calling on Baal. They've got their altar fixed. They've got the wood. They've got it, everything fixed just like it's supposed to be and nothing happens. Come on. Amen? Right. And they call out some more. Guess what? Nothing happens. Come on. Finally, they get a little crazy. They start cutting themselves. They start crying out. They're trying to get his attention. Now, maybe we cut ourselves yeah. and it'll get his attention. Maybe we scream and holler, run around. Maybe that'll get his attention. Amen? Come on. Oh, my, my, my. Nothing happens. Amen. So Elijah says, my turn. Mm -hmm. So he walks up there and he repairs the altar and he gets everything fixed the way he wants it. Yeah. But he doesn't stop there. And we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. He calls the guy and says, bring me some water yeah. and pour it over the sacrifice. Yeah. How many times did he do that? About seven, something like that. I'm not sure how many times he did it. How many? How many? Twelve barrels. Twelve barrels. And not only did he pour it over the altar and the sacrifice, but he had dug a trench around it and he had filled it with water too. All right. He wasn't fixing to leave no kind of a, a no kind of doubt in their mind what happened here. Amen. Yeah. There be no trickery here. There be no pulling a rabbit out of the hat. Amen. There be no sleight of hand. So he does all of that, and then what's he do? Does he cut himself? Does he cry? Does he scream? Does he holler, moan, groan, and roll on the ground? No, he just prays. And ask the Lord to send the fire. And you know what happens. The Lord sends the fire. Amen? And it consumes the sacrifice. And it consumes the wood. And it consumes the water. Amen. And it licks up the water that's in the trench. Yes, sir. What it says. Now who's God? The people begin to holler, the Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. And Elijah, he takes and he slays the prophets of Jezebel. Come on. Kills their prophets. Yeah. 
And he's got this great momentum and victory. And he's feeling powerful. And then comes word from the witch. Yeah. Come on. Elijah, this time tomorrow, you fixing to be dead. Come on. What's Elijah to do? He runs and he hides. Amen. Right. Now I don't know so much that it was that he was scared of Jezebel. Uh -huh. As I do is that maybe he was just discouraged. Right. Maybe he was just, you know, he just seen this great victory. Yeah. And then he gets the air and the wind knocked out of him again. Wait a minute. Oh. I thought I had the victory here. I thought that battle was won. Yeah. I thought it was over. No, not until Jezebel was dead and that comes sometime later. Amen? Yeah. And even then her spirit would live on. All right. Go over and read the book of Revelation. She's over there. Better yet, look around in the church today. In the year 2012, she's alive and well. Amen. Amen. Yeah. She's alive and well. The spirit of Jezebel. Yes, sir. Amen. True. So anyway, we find Elijah here. He's went and hid. For whatever reason. Whether he was scared of what's going to happen the next day, or whether he was discouraged or down and out, and we can read in some of his read in some of his words here, we can tell he was down and out. He was feeling sorry, amen, about the situation. Yes. And it says he came thither. I'm in verse nine, First Kings, the nineteenth chapter. And he came thither into a cave, unto a cave, and lodged there. And behold, behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said unto him, What doest thou here? Elijah. What are you hiding for? What are you doing here? Why are you hiding in this cave? Amen. Now remember, he just came off this huge victory. Amen. He just came from this, this, this wonderful... How many times you have been a wonderful service? Spirit of the Lord poured out everywhere. Revival on everybody. People getting prophesied to. Things happening and all as soon as it's over... Something yeah. happens. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Something happens. Seems like it takes the wind out of your sails. Yeah. Well, that's where he finds himself here. Amen. Amen. True. Listen to what it says. And he said, I'm in verse 20. I mean, I'm, I'm in verse 10. I'm sorry. Yeah. First Kings 19 10. And he said, I have been very jealous. Now he's getting ready to tell, sound like some of us. I will live for the Lord. I don't understand why this stuff happens to me. I try to do my best. Look at them people and pop smokers next door. They got everything. Brand new car, brand new swimming pool. I'm barely paying my light bill and I serve the Lord. That's exactly what he's fixing to talk about right here. That remind you anybody? Amen. I wish we had a tape recorder where we go go back and play some of our gloom, despair, and agony on me moments. Amen. Yeah. And he said, I've been very jealous for the for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant. Yeah. They've thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. Yeah. And they seek my life to take it away. Yeah. I stood up for you on Mount Carmel and in front of all of Israel. And look what happened to me. They're after me. They're trying to kill me. I'm discouraged. I'm down and out. I feel like I've been forsaken. Amen. And I'm the one who's been standing for you, Lord. I'm the one who's been living right. And everything seems to break. Yeah. yeah. Everything seems everything seems to fall apart. I'm the one trying here. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, that's where he was at. So see that feeling you get? That's no new thing. Right. People have been going through this a long time. Amen. Amen. Listen to what the Lord says to him. Verse 11. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains, yeah. and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. Yeah. But the Lord was not in the wind. And the message that he had for Elijah could not be found in that. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. You see that right there is what we usually miss. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, we get it. We go in the church house and everybody's rolling around, hooping, hollering, and shouting. Mm. We can get that. We can hear that. We can understand that. Right. Amen. The earthquake, the shaking, the fire. Oh, send the fire, oh God. Send the fire. Get it. Fill it. Burn me up with the Holy Ghost. Send, shake me like a dish rag. Come on. 
But it's that still small voice that we miss many times, especially in Pentecost. That's right. Because, you know, if God tries to use a still small voice, we leave out there thinking, well, that was plain dead. Yeah. Yeah. God don't always shout. That's right. Amen. Come on. God don't always holler. Amen. Sometimes He whispers. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's when we miss it. Right. How many times has the Lord whispered something to you? And after you got through arguing whether it was you or whether it was the Spirit or whether it was your flesh, you didn't do it. And then you realize later you missed it. Amen. Because He whispered. Yes. He didn't do. He didn't give you no big sign, no big wonder. He just whispered. Right. And you missed it. Amen. I can. I can. I can talk about that today, but please, because old brother Billy's done that. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Old brother Billy's done that. Right. Thank God, there's a few times I have listened Amen. to his whisper. Come on. Amen. Come on. But there's been a lot of times I didn't. Right. Because I wasn't listening close enough. Amen? Amen. He whispers. Listen to what he says. A still, small voice. Verse 13 says, And it was so when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle, and went out and he stood in the entering, of, in the entering end of the cave. Yeah. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, Now what's, it, what's he asking him again? Same thing. What doest thou here, Elijah? Yeah. Second time he's asking this. Right. He didn't get the right answer the first time. So he's going to give him a chance to answer again. All right. Amen? Amen? Wrong answer. Yeah. And he said, this is what his answer is. Same as it was before. I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. Yeah. Because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, they've thrown down thine altars and slain thy prophets with the sword. Mm -hmm. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. So apparently he thought the Lord didn't hear him the first time. Because he asked him the first time, what are you doing here? And he said, I'm the only one left. I'm the only one living right. I'm the only one standing up for you. And they're trying to kill me. And my life's terrible. And when God comes to him and asks him again, guess what he says? I'm the only one living for you. I'm the only one that's doing anything. They're trying to kill me. Life is terrible. Amen? All right. So this time, God will make Himself plain to Elijah. Amen. Verse 18. This is God's answer. In response to... Elijah's answer to his question, what are you doing here? 1 Kings 19 and 18. Let's see what the Lord tells him. Yet, have I, yet I have left, in response to him being the only one left that's living right, yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which hath not kissed him. And that's what we're going to be talking about. Not so much Elijah, because we could preach that. The church hiding somewhere. Somebody said one time the homo's coming out of the closet and the Christians are going in. Amen? All right. Used to be you didn't know somebody was a homosexual. Now they don't care. Amen? All right. Used to be. You didn't have any trouble telling who the Christians were, but now they do care. They're hiding it. Amen. Many of them, amen? Yeah. But I don't want to talk about this 7,000. I want to talk about this remnant that was left that the Bible said they had not bowed their knee to Baal yeah. and they had not kissed Him. Amen? Come on. Oh, these are people who stood out from the rest of the bunch. They didn't bow down to the false gods. Right. And apparently Elijah didn't know they existed. And I know the feeling. Sometimes I wonder myself if any of the rest of them exist. Amen? Amen. Sometimes I feel like one of those cars they roll up for one of them classic shows. Amen? Right. You know how they all say, this is the only one. This is 1932, Ford, whatever. Yeah. And they say, this is the only one on the road. That's yeah. the way I feel sometimes. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That's the way I feel. Oh. I've been going down the road before. Not Years ago, I was going down the road on Model T. I passed it. Yeah. I said, I know how you feel, buddy. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Only one on the road like that. Sometimes that's the way we feel. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sometimes we feel like Elijah. We feel like, hey, ain't nobody else seeking God. 
Ain't nobody else living for God. Ain't nobody else praying. Ain't nobody else fasting. Ain't nobody else still believes in living right. But God's answer for us today is the same one He had for Elijah up there in the cave. I have me some people that have not bowed their knee to Baal and have not kissed the false idols. Hallelujah. Amen. I still got a remnant. Jump over there to the New Testament with me. For you New Testament buffs. I tend to believe, well, I do believe, Genesis to Revelation, all inspired by the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. Some people, they just like to stay in the new. Some people just like to stay in the old. I like all of it. Amen? Amen. Romans 11. Romans 11. All these years after this has taken place, we find Paul writing in the book of Romans, and what's he say? Romans 11 and 1, I say then, hath God cast away His people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away His people, which He foreknew. Watch ye not that the Scripture saith of Elias? Now he's getting ready to talk to them about what happened to Elijah back there in the cave. How he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets. They have digged down thine altars. And I am left alone. Yeah. Well, see, Paul knew this pretty good, didn't he? That's exactly what Elijah was telling God back there years and years ago. Hundreds of years before Paul would write this. And they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? What's he say in verse 4 here? Romans 11 and 4. I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image Baal. Verse 5. This is what we want to get to. Even so, even so then at this present time, meaning today, now I was talking to you about Elijah and what happened in the cave and, and how that God had him 7,000 then. Well, I want you to know today, God wants you to know today, Paul says, he's speaking to this crowd, even at this present time, also there is a remnant. Somebody say remnant. remnant. There is a remnant according to the election of grace. Come on. What's Paul telling them? Just as it was in the days of Elijah, I had me a people that had not bowed their knee to Baal and not, had not kissed the idols of that day. Today, in the day of Paul, hundreds of years later, I still have a remnant who have not bowed their knee to Baal or kissed the false gods. I want to bring this down here to Livermore, Kentucky, 2012. Amen. July the 8th. Yeah. And let you know today, even though it may seem like sometimes we are few in number, oh. even though that sometimes it seems like maybe ain't very many people left that believe in living anything, that believe in doing anything for God, that believe in that believe in the word and his name and his blood and the cross. I want you to know today that still today, in the year 2012, God still has a remnant at this present time that has not bowed their knee to Satan, that has not bowed their knee to Allah, that has not bowed their knee to Muhammad, that has not kissed the false gods of the day in which we live. He still has a remnant that is standing up for His name, that is standing up for His blood that is standing up for the message of the cross that still is separated from the world. He still has a remnant. Amen. Amen. Right. You know what a remnant is. We talked about this before. A remnant is a small piece of something. It's left over from the original. Amen. All right. Made up of the same thing that the original was made up of Except it's just what's left of it. Amen. You get that? That's what the remnant is. They're made out of the same cloth, if I could use that parody this morning, that the original was made of. They still believe in walking the old paths. Yeah. They still believe in power in the name of Jesus. Amen. They still believe in... Whew, hallelujah. They still believe in being washed in the blood of the Lamb. Yeah. 
They still refuse to kiss the false gods of this day. And you'll have to excuse me if this offends anybody in any way. They still refuse to kiss the ring of the Pope. Amen. We've had some big time preachers, Billy Graham for one of them, uh -huh. that bowed and kissed the ring of the Pope. Maybe that was just a mishap in his judgment. But that's the kind of stuff that God was telling Elijah here that they had not bowed and kissed the false gods of that day. Mm -hmm. Amen? Right. What do you think you're doing, preacher, whenever you allow the people that come to your church that are Muslims to continue to believe the way that they believe? Never one time telling them that that way will lead them to hell. You have bowed and kissed the false god of Islam. Mm. Amen? Mom. What do you think you do whenever you sign an agreement that you're going to work side by side, that you're not going to share the gospel with them, that you're not going to share the only way to get to heaven? What do you think you've done? You've bowed your knee to the false god, the biggest false god of this day probably, Islam, the Muslim religion. Amen? Right. Maybe not the biggest, but one of the worst. Amen. So we're going to be talking about the remnant right. for a while. Yeah. Amen? Amen? There is a remnant today at their knees which have not bowed unto Baal and every mouth which hath not kissed him and I know sometimes it feels like you're all alone but God still has a remnant he still has something left amen. of the original amen right. he still has some people today right. that still believe in him he still has some people today that are going to live for him he still has some people today that are marked. Right. Amen. Mark. I went looking for the words of this old song last night. And one of the, the first person I asked was Sister Judy Frizzell. And I'll tell you why. It's because I remember her white haired mama. Right. Yes. In the first church that I ever preached a message in, Amen. right here in Livermore, Kentucky, down there on 7th Street, there on the corner, across from the break, where the bakery used to be. The first church I ever preached in, I remember her mama getting up behind the pulpit and she kind of walked with the time I met up with her and had it much to do with her she was old she was in, into her years and, and she didn't walk so straight anymore and she didn't walk so swift anymore amen and she had wrinkles on her face and she had a, a head full of white hair and, but I remember her getting up behind the pulpit and she sung something that went a little bit like this I lost my reputation when I turned my back on sin and a lot of friends went from me since I let my Savior in now they passed me by unknown when they once passed with a smile. Now they say I'm very foolish and they say I'm out of style. And here's the chorus for you. I am marked. Marked, marked. I am marked wherever I may go. I am marked, marked, marked. Just what I am, everyone seems to know. I am sealed, sealed, sealed. I am sealed by His Spirit divine. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I am His and I know and he is mine. Hallelujah. Praise I'm marked today. Yes. His remnant will be marked. Yes. You see, when you go over there and you read in the book of Revelations, book of Revelation, excuse me, some Bible scholars are going to correct me that there's no S on the end of it. In the book of Revelation, and you read there how the Antichrist will cause people to take a mark right. that we refer to as the mark of the beast. Right. That's no original thing. He didn't come up with that on his own. Right. He's an imitator. All right. Amen. He's a counterfeiter. God has had a mark for a long time. Yes, sir. Amen. True. And we'll talk about some of that when we go into look into the scriptures and the revelation of the remnant. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I'm not talking about a denomination. I'm not talking about a certain sect of people. Yeah. Well, not in the sense as we think of it. But I'm talking about a group of people, my, 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 yeah. that's going to come up out of every nation. Oh, I'm high. That's going to come up out of every nation. Yeah. Amen. You see some of these people that's been listening to us over in the Ukraine. Some of the people that's been listening to us over in Australia. Yeah. Some of the people that's been listening to us over there in Norway. Some of the people that's been listening to us over in the Vietnam. Some of the people that's been listening to us over, all around the world. Amen. I, mean, I can name you country after country. 73 in the last 30 days that have tuned in and listened to the, to the radio station. 73 countries. There's going to be a remnant. There's going to be a part of that remnant come up out of all of those nations. 
Amen. See, America don't have no hold on this. Matter of fact, America's losing her grip. Yeah. America's losing. They need, they need more of the remnant that comes up out of those other nations yeah. than there actually is yeah. the United States of America because we're losing. Oh, hell, we're losing it. Amen. But we're going to find out as we begin to study this and as we begin to look into the Scripture and we begin to look at the old and we begin to look at the new and we begin to look at the, at the end times and we begin to see how God's going to have Himself a people and we're going to see, my, 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 that this people is set apart. They are different. They are a remnant. Oh, my goodness. No wonder I get so many emails from people saying, you know, I love to hear you preaching. I love the message you're preaching because it's like it used to be. Yeah, that's because we're left over from the original. Amen? Yeah. There ain't a lot of us left, but we are a small piece of, oh, hallelujah, we're a small piece of the original cloth. Yeah. Oh, how, you ever heard somebody say, you know, they're both cut from the same cloth. Amen? Yeah. Oh, we're cut from a cloth today. Hallelujah. There ain't a whole lot of us left. The remnant ain't a very big piece, but it is still made up of the same thing the original was made up out of. Hallelujah. Oh, My Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. My goodness. Oh, the remnant. Somebody said the remnant. The remnant. The remnant. See, the remnant's going to be fruitful going to be a fruitful people. 2 Kings 19 and 30 says the remnant that escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward and bear fruit upward. The remnant's going to be a fruitful people. The remnant ain't going to be satisfied with just getting by. Amen. The remnant ain't going to be satisfied like that fig tree with just having leaves flapping in the wind. They ain't going to be satisfied without some fruit. Yeah. They ain't going to be satisfied without some fruit. Amen. Amen. Right. That's where most of the church is at today. Professing but not possessing. They stand over their leaves, flapping in the wind. I got something, I got something, but when you really inspect it, they don't got nothing. Right. Amen. Come on. Remnant's going to have some fruit. Amen. They're going to take roots downward. They're not going to be able to be blown about by every wind of doctrine. Right. They're going to take roots downward. They're going to be rooted. Rooted in what? The Baptist doctrine? Mm -mm. No. The Church of God doctrine? Huh. No. The Apostolic doctrine? Uh -uh. The United Pentecost doctrine? Mm -mm. The Catholicism's doctrine, uh -uh. rooted and grounded in the Word of God. Yeah. In the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The remnant. The remnant of the Lord. They're going to bear fruit upward. They're going to take root downward and bear fruit upward. I want to leave you with this thought right here this morning. <clears throat> Say, Brother Willie, you ain't got very far, I know, but we're going to take it, going to try to take it a little slow. Isaiah, the first chapter, the ninth verse. Isaiah, the first chapter, the ninth verse. The Bible says, Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we would have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. In other words, Except for the very small remnant that was left, destruction would have fell upon them as the same it did Sodom, as the same it did Gomorrah. Listen, church, if America's got any hope today, it rests on the shoulders of the remnant that is left. Mm -hmm. You hear what I said? Yes. Jesus is our hope. Yes, He is. And guess who He gave the commission to? The remnant. You. Jesus is the light. Yes, and guess who He made the light when He left? You. They said, if not for the remnant, and they, no, this is what He said. Don't miss this. Listen, He didn't just say a remnant, Brother Sleeves. He said He left unto us a very small remnant. Straight is the gate and narrow the way. And few there be that find it. We're talking about a small group of people. Amen. I'm talking about compared to the mass population of the globe, this number is not going to be very big. Amen. But if America has hope today to return once again to the God of Israel, it rests upon the shoulders of the remnant people today to tell them, to show them, to bring them the message of the cross. To bring them the message of Jesus. A very small remnant. 
I'll give you a little bit more of that song. This is so old. I went on Facebook and I said, any of you old time Pentecostals out there, please help me with the words of this song. Because I typed it in on the internet and tried to find out the name of the, the words of a song I am Mark, and you wouldn't believe the, the garbage I came up with. What wasn't contemporary was secular. But thank God somebody still remembered it. Amen. Amen. A remnant of them. A remnant of them. That's right. Now they think I'm very foolish and they say I'm but a crank. But the truth is I'm drunken on the wine that Peter drank. <laughs> for I tarried for the power he received at Pentecost. And I got far more glory than the little that I lost. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. I've gained much more than I've ever lost. Yeah. I am marked. I am marked. Oh, my, my set apart, marked right. by the Lord. Amen. The remnant is a marked people. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And we're going to look at more, a whole, whole lot more mm -hmm. of that. My goodness, I don't want to. I don't even want to stop, but we're going to stop right there. Uh -huh. And we're going to pick it up, Lord willing. More and more. More and more. Pick it up a bunch of Amen. The remnant. <clears throat> Tell somebody. We're learning about the remnant of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Why is this so important? Because, honey, if you ain't in the remnant, whenever that trumpet sounds, <laughs> the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God. Those of us which are alive and remain, right. talking about the remnant, right. are going to be called up. Those that hadn't bowed their knee to Baal, right. those that haven't kissed the reign of the Pope, those that haven't kissed their rug toward Mecca. Right. Amen. Come on. The remnant. My, my, my. We'll stop right there. Someone else this morning. Amen.